Now, our good new friend of the channel, Michael Kirkpatrick, who made some good comments about the Crime and Punishment podcast about the 1971-72 uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. And he talked about how in the 73 season he liked to see us do a podcast because that was the emergence of Settler and, of course, the purge by the WHA of uh, several players in the Leafs lineup. So today we're going to be talking about the 72-73 Toronto Maple Leafs and the various machinations after... Harold Ballard and Stafford Smite were found criminally responsible for stealing from uh, Maple Leaf Gardens. Now, this was their 56th season in the NHL. The Leafs, after making the playoffs and pushing Boston to five games the season before, slipped to sixth place in the East and missed the playoffs. Now, Toronto lost several players to the WHA, <coughs> including Bertie Perron, Rick Lee, Brad Selwood, Guy Trottier, and Larry Plo, the former Montreal Canadian, who all jumped to the new World Hockey Association. Now, coached by John McClellan with uh, Dave Keon as captain, GM was Jim Gregory. They finished a rough 27-14-10 with 247 goals for and 279 against. Now, nobody was going to stop the Montreal Canadiens this year because this was probably one of their, their best offensive teams in years. So much so that Montreal was plus 145 on the season. Now, uh, Settler uh, uh, won the scoring championship for uh, the Maple Leafs with 77 counters, uh, 29 goals, of course, but Keon Ledoui with 37. And, of course, that idiot who eventually signed with the WHA, Mike Pellick, uh, my godfather's uh, most disfavored uh, player, had 118 minutes in penalties. And, ironically, Ron Lowe, before he ever became bigger with the Oilers and the Capitals, uh, led Toronto with 12 victories. Montreal finished first in the division, and this included the New York Islanders in this campaign, 52-10-16. and 16. Boston was 51-22-5, and 5, had a great year. Rangers, 47-23-8. Buffalo was 37-27-14. and 14. Probably the one of the four of the most strongest East Division qualifiers in quite some time. Detroit had a good campaign but missed the playoffs by two points, 37-29-12. and 12. Now Toronto uh, finished minus 32. Again, lack of goal production was a big factor. Ended up with 64 points. Vancouver was outscored by 106 goals that year with 22, 47, and 9, while the expansion uh, uh, Islanders were 12, 60, and uh, 6, with 177 against. Now, uh, Toronto's uh, campaign was not too bad, but he couldn't, re couldn't beat teams in their own division. 11, 29, and 2 against their own division. They were 1 and 4 against Boston, 1 and 4 against Buffalo, 2 and 4 against Detroit, 0 and 5 and 1 against uh, Montreal, 4-1 against the, the Islanders, 1-4 against uh, the Rangers, and 2-3-1 and one against the, uh, the rest of the league. Now, uh, Tor Toronto was uh, uh, not too bad uh, uh, in the, the campaign, but uh, la ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, the, the idea about Toronto not making the playoffs had to do with lack of... Uh, uh, goal uh, goal production with anything else it uh, it was uh, like I said pretty uh, pretty pretty rough now this campaign started of not too bad they were pretty well at the 500 mark after the uh, the, the fifth game of the season but then he won, uh, went on to lose four of their next five games and uh, the negativity continued they had a November stretch where he lost uh, five of six then five straight then f five of seven and then uh, they were winning two, losing three. Uh, had a very, very hard time in a row, ladies and gentlemen. I think there were six or seven consecutive games, uh, if not more, he lost uh, on the road. Okay, uh, like I said, not too bad at the, the friendly confines of Maple Leaf Gardens. So this was a development year for the Maple Leafs. All the big success of the Maple Leafs later in the season was based more on the young players that came up in uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, campaign. Now, uh, Daryl Settler, again, again, had a great campaign, 77 points, including 29 goals. But the big unheralded uh, guy, Rick Keogh, would eventually leave Toronto a couple of years later, had 75 points, including 33 goals, and uh, only uh, two power play goals with five uh, game winners. Keon, again, had his typical season, 73 points in 76 games, eight power play goals, two shorthanded and six game winners. So we had uh, 16 what he called positive counters. Normie Allman uh, broke 20 goals again with 55 points in 65 games. 
Defenseman Jim McKinney had a good year on offense, 52 uh, points, and uh, led with a plus six. Now, Ron Ellis, again, uh, 29 or 20 goal season, 22 goals, 29 assists for 51 uh, points. Now, uh, Pierre Jarry, uh, in limited action on the second and third line, had 19 counters. Dennis Toupere, 13 goals in 61 games. But Paul Ind- Henderson, in kind of an injury plague uh, season, only had 18 counters in 40 games. But a young Errol Thompson, uh, Sean, he had 32 points in 68 games. Of course, he would be part of the McDonald um, settler line, which had dominated the mid 70s. Gary Monahan overachieved with 31 points in 78 games. And a young George Ferguson, uh, the start of his uh, what he called hard working two way two way career, ten goals in seventy two games. Pelic was uh, nineteen points. Brian Glennie in an injury plague season, a goal and ten assists for eleven points. Joe Lundergan had ten points and forty nine counters. Dave Fortier five points. Larry McIntyre three points. Bobby Bond uh, back for five games with a goal and assists. Randy Osborne had two assists in twenty six games. King Clancy's relative Terry had played in thirty two. Ron Lowe had 42 uh, games, Gordon McRae had 11, Lyle Moffat had 1, while Jacques Plante had 32, and Dale Smedso, the left winger, uh, just like Lyle Moffat, had uh, 4 counters. Now, in between the pipes, Ron Lowe uh, played 2,343 minutes with a 12, 24, and 4 record, but Plante led the way with goals against with 304, 8, 14, and 6. Gordon McRae had a very positive season, 7 wins, 3 losses, and 11 contests. And uh, what uh, what was the big thing for uh, Toronto that year, of course, was the uh, the trade of Jacques Plante to Boston, when Angela ended up being the pick for Ian Turnville. That was the biggest thing of the year. Now, of course, Bernie Perron eventually uh, uh, was uh, uh, sent to Boston, or his rights were sent to Boston. And the first round pick, Bob Neely, came back. And, of course, uh, got rid of uh, uh, some deadwood at Lee Palmer and uh, more Norm McLeod. Free agents, of course, were uh, for the 73 74 season were Boreas Salming and Inga Hamstrom. So you can see the team was really going. Now, John Ferguson was bound to make the team because they were number one pick. But the biggest steal of it was Pat Boutet who was a big factor with Toronto and with other teams through the years, a good defensive player, name dropped on SCTV. He was drafted 139 overall in the ninth round for the University of Minnesota Duluth. So they were bringing in George Ferguson, Pat Boutet, Boris Salving, Ingram Hamstrung, eventually Ian Turnbull uh, dra- drafted in uh, the 73 draft. It was just, uh, uh, just uh, tremendous. Now as for the season itself, nobody was going to stop Montreal this year. They played Chicago in the final in a shootout Obviously, uh, the outlast of Tony Esposito, uh, what he called the, the Dennis Hall uh, Blackhawks. So, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very interesting season for Toronto. Even though they were shooting blanks for most of the year, they only had five players that were scoring. They basically were building towards what was going to be a successful mid-70s for them uh, against the Flyers, eventually against Toronto. And, uh, you know, they could win the first round, but always had trouble in the quarterfinals. So, ladies and gentlemen, this was, a, again... Uh, a request uh, of our new follower of the channel, Michael uh, Kirkpatrick. What a great, great uh, hockey name. Uh, and uh, uh, Michael, if you want to post him on something, is anybody your name, uh, anybody in your family called Kirk McPatrick? That would be a, the best hockey name going. It uh, just rolls off the tongue. So uh, like Michael, if you like what you're doing here with our Toronto Maple Leaf podcast, let us know in a like, comment, subscribe, or share. He just wanted you to let you know that uh, he called it the emerger of uh, Sittler uh, and Salming uh, to Toronto, McDonald and Turnbull coming up in the draft. And again, it's a very, very interesting year because they were holding back and were waiting for Palmatier to arrive as well, which was another factor. But he, he tried Wayne Thomas for a little while as well. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Michael Kirkpatrick. Thank you, all the Toronto Maple Leaf fans. Again, if you like what you're doing, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And yes, Ballard got out of jail eventually. That's another story. Bye.